I'm also happy to introduce Margarita Estrada, who's a member of the First Unitarian Church in LA, and I think and Rochelle will further introduce her uh, during the, their, their presentation. So please help us welcome Rochelle and Margarita. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, it's really a pleasure to be here, uh, joining with you this morning. And I've been here before. Um, the last time I was here, I spoke about uh, immigration and the bond fund. It's an issue that's close to my heart. But another issue that is uh, close to my heart is the um, the opening of Unitarian Universalism <coughs> to a larger community. Because in some ways I see our religion as being, uh, tending to be uh, exclusive. And how then can we reach out to be more welcoming to people of other cultures? And, and First Unitarian Church in Los Angeles is fortunate in, um, in residing, having its place of worship in the midst of a community that is very multi-ethnic, multi-lingual, and uh, we're actually we're in Koreatown now, as Koreatown keeps moving east, but the, in fact the people that uh, live in that area are largely Latino. And, um, and First Church um, uh, made a, a decisive um, decision mm -hmm some years ago during the war in El Salvador and the uh, genocide in Guatemala to open its doors to immigrants, to be welcoming to immigrants from Central America. And in a way, that's really how Margarita has joined us. Uh, long story, but um, I, I want to share with you uh, how Margarita and I met and, um, and how she and she will share with you how she became Unitarian Universalist, because I think it will be, uh, well, if not universal, uh, interest, Unitarian Universalist interest, <laughs> to share those stories with you. So, um, Margarita and I met uh, some years ago during the, the Civil War in El Salvador. And at that time, some very activist people in El Salvador uh, fled in the diaspora from that war-torn country, and uh, they came here and they formed some important uh, institutions in the Pico Union area, which is where First Church is. And one of those was the Clinica Monsignor Oscar Romero, and that's where Margarita and I met. So, Mar let Margarita tell you further about that. Good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to be in this church and to share with you. Yeah, hold it closer. Hold it closer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good morning, it's a pleasure to be here and share with all of you our experience, uh, which it was very, very rich experience to me uh, in different ways, to be in this country and to meet a wonderful people. Because when we live in our country, when we don't go farther, we don't know exactly how the culture, how the people live. Sometimes we have a wrong concept. But to me, to come to the United States, it was a wonderful experience. I found a wonderful people here, good heart, and a lot of solidarity, especially during the 80s when we have the war over there. You know, people get out of the country only for very important reason or for very difficult reason like a natural disaster, war, or very uh, difficult, I'm sorry for my broken English, but I try to speak this <laughs> language. Uh, or another reason it is for economic reason, but during the 80s, you, all of you know how it was in my country, it was difficult, everybody tried to get out, and I came to the United States in 1988, and I met Rochelle in Clinica Romero in 1989, which it is uh, 24 years ago. 
and I met Rochelle, and we worked together in Clinica Romeo, but we became closer than the last 12 years, I guess. And one day she invited me to, to be in her church uh, with any commitment. She said, oh, no, just go and be there. You will meet more people. I was familiar with Unitarian Church before because when I was in Clinica Romeo, when we have a special event, we have those events in the first Unitarian Church. I started to be familiar. And I feel like a, an open house uh, uh, where the people feel as welcome and very comfortable. And I think this is one of the main reasons we have in our church now uh, Maybe 50% of the members of our church, they are Latin American people. And half of them, maybe we are South Korean. And, and it's not a strange, it's one reason, because when we came in the 80s, this church opened the doors wide for us. And I remember the one family was there in the sanctuary of movement, which it was very nice, a big impact in this society. It's, it was a good way to say, those people came to this country because they suffer over there, we, because we, we support economically to continue this war, and now they cannot live there, they are not safe, a lot of people die over there, and many massacred, and and since this happened, I think most of the Salvadorian community in LA, we recognize this church like a very friendly church, very sensitive and political involved in what's going on in my country. And personal, my personal experience, why I joined to this church, uh, probably it's a little different with the rest of the people, but we have many things in common. Uh, my personal reason beyond I feel comfortable with them is because it was hard to me to insert in this society to be with another people who saw like I thought the people who has almost the same concept uh, about justice, because I'm a lawyer in my country, I'm a human rights lawyer in my country. And the last time when I left my country, it was, well, I was, I came in 1988, but I come back after we signed the peace, when we stopped the war. And I tried to, to help a new society with more justice over there. But I come back uh, six years ago uh, after it was so difficult to me as a human rights lawyer to continue to work over there after we worked in the first international case. And I feel I cannot be here. I cannot have opportunity here. I, I applied for different jobs and it was impossible. I said, well, I know the way how to get out of my country, and I'll do it one more time. I know LA, I feel comfortable over there, I know many people, I have many friends, and yes, I come back, and, and I joined to Unitarian, First Unitarian Church in Los Angeles, and I am so happy to be there. We have a, a group we call um, uh, uh, Monsignor Romero Group, uh, which it is a good representation for us. Uh, it, is, it is an honor to have his name. He was a great lead for Salvadorian people, and I know for many people around the world, they admire what he did during the war. Um, yeah, Margarita, could you tell us why the Unitarian Church was the church that you felt comfortable in. Uh, in other words, what is it about Unitarian Universalism that has that you found comfortable or some how to relate to? I don't know many churches, but I know maybe three or four churches, different churches, and 
I think uh, the principle of the Unitarian Church are similar what I think about everything, about the uh, spiritual thing, uh, justice, and in different way. Uh, this is the reason I feel comfortable. I can do whatever I want. I can participate when I want. What is my passion? Because everybody has a specific passion. Uh, everybody likes to work. Some people like to work in justice, and other people like to work in uh, children development, and other people like to work in uh, environment. And in some church, they give it to you like an obligation, even if you are not interested to do that. And I feel free in in my church. And we can express or talk, even if we think a little different. And we respect the people, what they, they said. And, and I was reading here, the principle is similar, like what we said in the first Unitarian church. Uh, and also because Political issue is one of my passions. Uh, this is the reason I choose to be a, a human rights lawyer in my country, which it was not easy. Uh, and we have many things in common. Uh, and it's multi it's multi I love and I love to learn how every culture it is. Uh, it's very rich. It's it's very, very nice to be there. And I feel totally comfortable. Uh, what was your religious background that, um, that, that you rejected the old religion, right? <laughs> well, I grew up in a very small town in El Salvador. I, uh, I didn't have many choices. We have only one religion at this moment. Now we have more churches over there. But uh, my family was uh, Catholic. And, and I grew up in Catholic Church. Um, so why did you leave the Catholic Church? Well, I said we didn't have another choice. It's the only religion we have. No, I know. Why did you? Why didn't you continue to be a Catholic? Um, I think uh, I have more common thing with Unitarian uh, people. Uh, Catholic Church has very vertical structure, and Unitarian it is the opposite. And, and I feel more comfortable when everybody is almost at the same level, like to be in a circle, you know. Uh, it makes me more comfortable. Uh, it make, I feel I am part of this group or this body uh, is not somebody on top and who tell me everything and sometimes we cannot say, no, I don't want to agree about this. And no, you have to believe in this, you know, and it's a different environment, totally different. So how do you think we as Unitarian Universalists could be more successful in uh, finding others like yourself in the Latino population that would be interested in joining with us? Uh, it's a big challenge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a big challenge because, you know, uh, when you said Latin America, I'm sorry to say Latin America because I feel more comfortable because when we said Latino, we include Italy people and other people from another country, but when we said Latin American from Mexico to Argentina. Uh, it's, it's tough because uh, even if we speak Spanish, all country except for Brazil and Belize, uh, we have different background. Everyone, even in Central America, uh, we are next to Guatemala and we are a little different uh, than Nicaraguan or Honduras people. This is the reason it's hard because most people in this country, they think they are Latinos or Latin Americans, but 
That's true. We can call that, but we are very different. And, and also the people who are coming here, we have a different background, we have different uh, level of education, we have uh, some people from certain countries we are more involved in political issues, like El Salvador, Nicaragua, mm, some people from Guatemala. But the rest of the other country, they, they are not. When they are coming here and they hear about political issues, they say, why those people are talking about political? Only the politician has to talk about it. <laughs> uh, we, we, we are not interested in that thing. That, that really is true with our experience um, with the people that live around First Unitarian Church. Um, they just are not interested in politics and they see the church as being strange and uh, how is that a, a church? So it's been, it's been a stretch to try to reach out to them to, to get over the concept that we are a spiritual community. But um, to see spirituality as, as divorced from a, um, a certain um, internalized image of God is really uh, counterintuitive to them. So it really is very difficult. Another thing it is, uh, in all countries, we discriminate, well, I don't want to include because I don't discriminate, uh, gays and lesbians, and they hear we are open for those people. They, they don't feel comfortable because it's not what they used to, to be in. Um, uh, in a way, I think that the, um, the hardline um, religious fundamentalism, whether it's Catholic or a form of Protestantism in 